Hey guys, welcome to section 6.2. In this section, we'll talk about how to add and subtract radicals. Let's get started. So let's take a trip down memory lane and think back to polynomials. When we were adding and subtracting polynomials, we always did so with like terms. And we knew back then that two terms were like terms if the bases were the same and the exponents were the same. So here we can see that we have x to the fourth, x is the base, four is the exponent, and x to the fourth again. So these two terms were known as like terms because their bases were identical and were the, po uh, the powers or the exponents. So we could have added these two together and get eight x to the fourth. Seven x plus three x, the variables are the same and so are the powers, one and one. Therefore we can add these two together and get 10 x. However, if we look down here, x to the fourth and x to the fifth, even though the bases are the same, the powers are not. So we cannot add these two together. If we take a look here to the right, we have seven x minus x to the fifth. The bases are the same, but the powers are not. So we cannot combine these two terms because they are not like terms. Again, two terms are like terms with polynomials if they have the same base and they have the same exponent. Those are the requirements. And also, when we combine like terms, we only ever add or subtract the coefficients. We don't touch the variable or the power. So these are a whole bunch of examples, but looking down here, they all do the same exact thing. If we have 7x plus 3x, 7 plus 3 gives us 10, and then we keep the like term the same. Excuse me. If we have 7x squared plus 3x squared, Again, we have like terms, so we add the three and the seven to get 10. And then the x squared comes along for the ride. The same thing can be seen with x cubed and x to the fourth. And I want you to observe that only the coefficient changed. And then the same thing is true with subtraction as well. So if we have seven x minus three x squared, well, this just stays as it is because these are not like terms. Here we have three x squared minus five x squared plus seven x squared. Here we do have like terms, same bases, same exponents. So we can combine like terms by adding or subtracting their coefficients. So three minus five is negative two, plus seven is uh, five. So the answer turns out to be five x squared. Moving ahead. So now if we want to add or subtract radicals, we simplify each radical first. Then once we've done that, once we have it down to its simplest form, we combine like terms second. So we don't want to combine like terms right away, unless of course we have like terms. And I'll do some examples where they are and some examples where they're not. And like terms in radical land looks like they have the same index and they have the same radicand. So if you have a square root on one term and a square root on the second, that's half the story. What you're taking the square root of has to be identical as well, not just the index. So both the index and the radicand must be the same. And just like with polynomials, when we combine like terms, we only add or subtract the coefficients. The radical, the radicand, the index, everything inside that complex stays the same. It's only the coefficient on the outside that changes. So a couple of examples, something from polynomials first. We have 5x plus 3x minus 2x. We notice that the bases are same, x, x, x. We notice that the powers are the same, 1, 1, and 1. So because we have like terms, we can combine these together. 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 minus 2 is 6. So the answer turns out to be 6x. Similarly, if we want to simplify five radical 11 plus three radical 11 minus two radical 11, these are like terms in radical land. So what that means is that their index are the same. So here the index is two, here the index is two, here the index is two as well. Not only that, the radicand, the thing inside the radical is the same, 11, 11, 11. So what we can do is we can add and subtract the coefficients. So five plus three is eight, eight minus two is six, and then the radical 11 just sticks around. So I wanted to do these examples back to back on the same slide because hopefully you observed 
that the coefficients were the same in either problem. And instead of the x here, I replaced the x with radical 11. Outside of that, nothing really changed. Everything else was exactly the same. Here's something slightly more complicated, or more in the vein of what I'd be expecting you guys to do. So we have the 7 times the fifth root of 6 plus 4 times the fifth root of 3 minus 9 times the fifth root of 3 plus the fifth root of 6. And I color coded these to indicate which ones were like terms. So here we see that we have a fifth root of 6, and I also have a fifth root here. But this term and this term are not like terms because the radicands are different. So the yellow ones are the fifth root of sixes, so that's the first term, and also the last term. And the blue ones are where you have like terms again, but it's the fifth root of three. So we have a fifth root of three here, we also have a fifth root of three here. So going from this step to this step, all I did was just group the yellow ones together and the blue ones together. You don't have to do it, I just wanted to visually indicate that both of these have the same radicand and the same index. Both of these terms have the same radicand and the same index. So we combine like terms by adding the coefficients, 7 plus the 1. Uh, there's an imaginary 1 here, you can place it there if you like. Gives us 8 times the fifth root of 6 minus, and then the minus comes from 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So we get negative 5 fifth root of 3. Now hopefully you'll notice here that I did not simplify the radical first. I, I started combining like terms right away. And if we take a look back, that was the first condition. Simplify each radical first. However, here, in this example, we didn't do that either. But let's think about it. What's the largest number less than, a, less than 11 on our list of perfect squares? So 9. 9 is not a factor of 11. The next smaller number is uh, 4 on that list. 4 is not a factor of 11 either. And then we end up with 1. So this could not be simplified further. This just is what it is. Square root of 11 cannot be simplified as a radical. So that's why I was able to move next to combining like terms. Similarly, if we look at this example, we see that 6 uh, is inside the radical. And here we have to take the fifth root of 6. Well, there's not really a number that I can think of that I can multiply by itself five times to get 6 as the answer. So if we start with 2, 2 raised to the fifth power is 32. That's already too big. So there's nothing that I can get with 6. And if 32 is the smallest number, I cannot find the fifth root of 3 either. So that's why I was able to combine like terms with these right away, as opposed to trying to simplify it, the radical. For something like this, I know that it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the stuff that you see. Uh, the best thing I can tell you is either take a sheet of paper or a note card and just hide the part of the screen that we haven't talked about yet. Go step by step, and I promise you it's not a bad problem, as long as you follow the rules. So this is the question that we're asked to simplify. What we can do is treat 5 radical 45 by itself. So simplify just 5 radical 45 and nothing else. So, and we'll come back to the rest of the problem. Let's just simplify 5 times radical 45. So we think back to our list of perfect squares. What's the largest number less than 45 on that list? 36. So 36 is not a factor of 45. The next number is 25. That's not a factor of 45 either. 16 isn't either, and then 9. 9 is a factor of 45. So we split up 45 as 9 times 5. And now, hopefully you guys remember the product rule from the last uh, video or the last lecture. We can split this radical into 2 because I have a product in the middle. So square root of 9 times 5 turns into square root of 9 times square root of 5. Square root of 9 is 3. So that's what comes here. And everything else is just getting copied down. So 5 comes here, square root of 5 comes here. And 5 times 3 gives us 15. So this eventually simplifies and becomes 15 radical 5, or 15 times square root of 5. Then I move on to 6 radical 18, and I simplify that. So similarly, 6 radical 18 turns into 6 
times. And instead of 18, I can rewrite it as nine times two. Again, I'm thinking of what the largest number on the list of perfect squares is less than 18. So 16, but 16 is not a factor of 18. And then nine comes next, nine does work. So that's the one I use nine times two. And again, just like I did with this problem, or with this simplification, I can split this right down the middle because I have a product. And this turns into six radical nine times radical two, radical nine as before is the same as three, six times three gives us 18. So all of this six radical 18 simplifies to give us 18 radical two. Second to last, we have two radical 98. And I won't go through the entire process again, I'm hoping that you're able to internalize it at this stage. 98 gets rewritten as 49 times two. We have a product rule in the middle or we have a product in the middle. So the product rule ap applies, we can split this up, turning it into square root of 49 times square root of two, square root of 49 is seven. So I copy that here. And then finally, two times seven is 14. So this two radical 98 simplifies to 14 radical two. And then finally, radical 20 needs to get simplified. So I did that last. And radical 20 splits into radical four times radical five, because 20 is the same as four times five. And then square root of four is the same as two, radical five just comes over. So now what we do is five radical 45, was the same as 15 radical five. So instead of writing five radical 45, I write here 15 radical five. Next, I have six radical 18. Instead of six radical 18, I write down 18 radical two. Next, we have two radical 98 and two radical 98 gave us 14 radical two. So that's what I wrote here. And finally, radical 20 is the same as two radical five. Now at this stage, we can just combine like terms. So we have to match up the indices, which is the index, the number outside the radical in the crevice right here, and the radicand itself. So we have two radical five here, and 15 radical five here, that gives us 17 radical five, we only add the, uh, the coefficients. So 15 plus two gives us 17. So that gives us 17 radical five. And then finally, with the radical twos, we have 18 radical two minus 14 radical two, 18 minus 14 gives us four. So the answer turns out to be four radical two. And that's it, this problem is finished, you combine like terms by first simplifying. So that's why I put this bracket here, because this indicates that this entire block of computation was just to simplify each individual radical. And once we've done that, we can combine like terms by making sure first that the indices are the same and the radicands are the same. Both of those need to be identical before we can combine like terms. With this problem, we have cube roots. So hopefully you're thinking that, uh, or you're thinking of the perfect cubes list that I asked you guys to memorize. So we have four cube root of 54 minus nine cube root of 16 plus five cube root of nine. Again, we're going to simplify our individual cube roots first and then combine like terms. So four times the cube root of 54, we think of the largest number less than 54 on our list of perfect cubes and the largest number less than 54 on that list is 27. And lo and behold, that's the number that actually works out because 27 times two is 54. So again, because I have a product between these, I can split this up into two different radicals. So I get cube root of 27 times cube root of two, cube root of 27, we should know is three, because three times three times three is 27. So that's what I put here. And then the cube root of two just comes along for the ride. Four times three gives us 12. So the final uh, simplification of four times the cube root of 54 is 12 times the cube root of two. Similarly, negative nine times the cube root of 16, the 16 can be simplified into eight times two, because eight is a perfect cubed. And then again, we can split it right down the middle because I have a product in the middle. This gives us negative nine times the cube root of eight times the cube root of two. 
cubed of 8 is 2 from our list, and then finally negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. So the middle term simplifies to negative 18 cube root of 2. Finally, we have 5 times the cube root of 9. Now if we think what's the largest number less than 9 on the list of perfect cubes, it's 8, but 8 is not a factor of 9. And then the next number after that is 1, which is how we know to stop looking, that there are no cube roots of 9. So 5 cube root of 9 just stays as 5 cube root of 9. We cannot always simplify, and if we can't, don't force it. Just leave it alone. So finally, 4 times the cube root of 54 simplifies to 12 cube root of 2. 9 cube root of 16 simplifies to 18 cube root of 2. And then the 5 cube root of 9 just stays as it is. Now at this stage, we see that both of these terms, the first and the second term, they have a 2 as a radicand and as a 3 as an index. So because they are like terms, I can combine them, which is to say that I'm going to add or subtract the coefficients only. So 12 minus 18 gave us negative 6. The, ra the cube root of 2 just comes along for the ride. Again, we never touch the radical. We only add or subtract the coefficients when we're combining like terms or adding or subtracting radicals, we only add or subtract the coefficients of like terms. And then 5 times the cube root of 9 just comes along for the ride. There's nothing that we can do with it. Here's a slightly more involved problem, but it, it follows the exact same principles that we used in the last problem. For each one of these, we observe that this one is a square root, this one is a cube root, square root, cube root. So before I start these problems, I always try to make inventory to make sure that I don't accidentally combine terms that should not be combined. So if I have, you know, if I know from the very beginning that I should be aware that this is a square root, this is a cube root, this might be a square root of two, and this might be a square root or a cube root of, of two, but I should not combine those because the indices are different. So again, just like we have, we're going to simplify each term individually and then just combine all the answers together. So 4 times the square root of 80. Again, we go back to our list of squares. The largest number less than 80 that is a factor of 80 is 16. 80 is the same as 16 times 5. Because I have a product, I can split the radical, and then square root of 16 gives me 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So we get 16 radical 5. Next, we have a cube root of 48. So we're doing the same thing again as we did with the previous simplification, but we're instead thinking of our cubes, not squares. The largest cube less than 48 is 27, but 27 is not a factor of 48. So we move on to the next cube, which is 8, or perfect cube, which is 8. And 8, indeed, is a factor of 48, so we split 48 as 8 times 6. Cube root of 8 is 2, so that comes here. Cube root of 6 stays as it is, but we, because we don't know what it is, and we cannot simplify it further. 3 times 2 on the outside gives us the 6. And then second to last, we have negative 10 times square root of 98. This we've simplified as keeping the negative 10 on the outside, but recognizing that 98 is the same as 49 times 2. Again, I'm starting with my list of squares. The largest number on the list less than 98 is 81. 81 is not a factor. Then I move down to 64. 64 is not a factor. 49, lo and behold, that's the one that works. So again, we split it down the middle because we have a product. Square root of 49 is 7. Negative 10 times 7 is negative 70, and radical 2 just comes along for the ride. Finally, we have negative 4 times the cube root of 270, or sorry, 250 rather. Negative 4 comes along for the ride because it's a coefficient, but we recognize that 250 is the same as 125 times 2. Again, the largest number that's a perfect cube less than 250 is 216. 216 is not a factor of 250, so we try the next one over or the next one up, which is 125, and 125 works out. Again, because we have a product, we can split it down the middle. The cube root of 125 is 5. And then, well, oh, sorry. The cube root of 125 is 5. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. 
and then the cube root of two just comes along. Finally, we just write down all the simplifications together. So 16 radical five comes over, six cube root of six comes over, negative 70 square root of two comes over, negative 20 cube root of two comes over. And you'll notice that none of these radicands are the same except for these two, but this index is not the same as this index. So we cannot combine these two like terms. These two radicands are different, so that's out. Not only that, the indices are different. So for, for this particular problem, the only thing we could do was simplify. There is nothing to combine here because we don't have like terms. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, as always, please do ask. Have a nice day.